Just going back to your research program and your goal to solve technical alignment, I want to kind of spoil the ending and tell people what you've landed on on your research direction, which is basically quoting your own words, reverse engineering human social instincts on like a neuroscience brain algorithm level, correct? Yeah. I think we should think of the human brain as doing some kind of model-based reinforcement learning. Um, and it has a reward function that says that pain is bad and that uh, eating when you're hungry is good. These are, and, and a bunch of other things like that. These are sometimes called innate drives or primary rewards, primary reinforcers, primary punishers, in, depending on what field you're in. And I think these are like uh, in, basically some innate set of, set of drives that makes humans like to do some things and dislike other things. And a subset of that is human social instincts that make us, uh, you know, want to uh, do what the cool kids are doing in school. That makes us want to feel compassion in some cases and spite in other cases and bloodlust in other cases. So we have this whole suite of, of social instincts for better and for worse. And I think that when we make powerful AI, uh, I, I, my, my central expectation is that it's going to be a, a more similar architecture to how the human brain works. So by the same token, there will be a reward function and the programmers get to put whatever they want into that reward function. So if we want the AIs to feel compassion, then uh, it would be a good jumping off point to understand how the human brain builds compassion. Mm -hmm. I talk a lot on this program about the difficulty of steering AI, and I think that the AI companies are nowhere near being able to steer it. And most of them, my impression is they even admit that, you know, they admit like, yeah, it's an open problem, but we're working on it. We're going to get the AI to help us. So there's a lot of consensus on the idea that like, yeah, AI steering is hard. It's an open problem. And of course, you've got these problems with like Grok calling it mega Hitler. That's probably not exactly what the team wanted. So steering is a challenge. And I would describe your ultimate goal. This is my take on it. Tell me if this is correct. You want to understand how the human brain steers itself. So then we understand how to steer AIs or program steering into the AIs. And then the ultimate goal is that we get the AIs to steer the world as an IQ augmented human would steer it. I mostly agree with that. I feel like I want to push back and say that if we're really just talking about the LLMs that exist today, there is in fact room for improvement in making you know, O3 lie less, I expect that. Give it a year or two and O3 will actually lie less and deceive less. I think that Grok will stop calling itself Mecha Hitler if you give it enough time. Um, I think that these are tractable problems that people are iterating on and they'll solve. And I'm more uh, interested in the disanalogies between the LLMs of 2025 and the more powerful AIs of the future and why we should expect those disanalogies, if indeed we should expect those disanalogies. Um, in terms of what you said, yeah, so evolution needs to build a brain that um, exhibits flexible behavior towards genetic fitness, enhancing things like finding healthy food and, you know, having high status in your hunter-gatherer tribe and attracting mates. If evolution is just programming a reflex, like if there is a, you know, dark expanding blob in, in my field of view, then I should flinch my head because probably something is heading towards my face. You don't need reinforcement learning for that. You don't need any kind of interesting like solution to that problem. You just detect a, you, you build a, a dark expanding blob detector into the brain and you wire it up to the like flinch reaction and problem solved. But humans are, are also systematically doing flexible, motivated, foresighted behavior towards things like, you know, helping their kids. And it would be interesting to know how that works. Now, your vision, basically what you think is the most likely thing to even aim for, you describe it as brain-like AGI with the better parts of reverse engineered human social instincts. But it is autonomous, correct? Uh, yeah, I think there have to be AIs that are thinking about what would constitute a good future and autonomously making decisions in that direction, as opposed to following specific directions from humans. Mm -hmm. So this, this can come about in a number of ways. We can talk about the starting point being, you know, follow person X's long-term best interest. Even if what person X doesn't realize that something is in their long-term best interest, do it anyway. And then one potential vision for how to get there is 
maybe humans are able to autonomously act towards a good future, we hope. So whatever humans are able to do, humans are able to do moral philosophy to some extent. Maybe AIs that are sufficiently similar to humans can also do moral philosophy for the same reasons. Things like that. That seems like worth looking into. Again, I, I don't have a plan that I feel great about, but that's one of the directions that I'm looking into. Let's say I'm trying to think of a strategic plan for my company, you know, like Elon Musk thinking about what kind of engine is going to be the best to ultimately get us to Mars. You know, what kind of engine design should we simplify the engine or what kind of fuel should we use? What kind of steel should we build it out of? So he's having these abstract strategic planning sessions with himself. And from your perspective, it's not going to be solved by just the LLM type, you know, those kind of like short circuits of like just use reinforcement learning. Like there's some other layer comes in, comes into play, some steering system. And it's going to be like the brainstem and hypothalamus somehow doing it, right? Like maybe you can make that connection clearer because it would be great if you're like, yeah. And then they go and do something that the Cleveland Clinic would have described as like regulating homeostasis, but they like somehow put their hand on the steering wheel. Yeah, I feel like you're... You've gotten an impression that I think the the real difference between the human brain like AGI and LLMs is that the human brain has a cooler reward function, but that's not what I think. I think the the cortex is a better learning algorithm than a transformer that's able to do things that, that transformers can't do. It has a better inductive bias in, in whatever relevant senses. That's where I think the big difference is. So if we go back to Elon Musk, I don't, I don't know what's driving him in the past, certainly not today, but you know, if he's motivated to build a better rocket, then like, why is he motivated? I don't know. He must be motivated for some reason, but it's hard to know exactly what the reason is. Like if I, if I say to Elon Musk, like, you know, it's very important that you have, you know, an odd number of, of $1 bills in your wallet, then he would say, why is that important? And I would say, did because you have an even number of fills in your wallet, but it should be odd. And he would say, why, why should it be odd? Why should I even care about this? Like, we're not going to be getting anywhere. But there's something driving Elon to build that rocket ship. And I think that ultimately comes from some kind of innate drive. Yeah, but let's separate out that question of like the core motivation or the innate drive. And let's just look at the drive to solve instrumental sub goals, right? It's like whatever Elon's true motivation is, he currently has an instrumental sub goal where he just wants the right engine that's most likely to get us to Mars. And I'm just curious how to model the brain, even thinking strategically about that sub goal in a way that maybe you think LLMs will never be able to do, right? Or like there, there's some interesting thing the brain is doing just to help him think strategically better than LLMs. I think the real difference is that brains are just better at doing RL than existing AI algorithms today. So RL algorithms, like there's a lot of things that, so for example, if I go to a yummy restaurant, then I want to go back to it and I don't need to, you know, go to the restaurant over and over and over and over again. And in this episodic way and the way that an RL algorithm, as we think of it today, would have to do. Instead, I can just want to go to the restaurant after eating their yummy food just once and make flexible, foresighted plans towards doing that. Um, so it's like, I, I think it's pretty clear that, that the human model-based RL system is just more effective at doing model-based RL, at having a model and getting yeah. rewards on the basis of that model with planning than any existing algorithm, whether LLMs, whether alpha zero or mu zero type things than what the AI research community has produced today. You're anticipating brain-like AGI, and you're anticipating that this kind of new actor critic reinforcement learning that's getting us farther than LLMs have ever gotten us and is doing longer term horizon tasks successfully, you're anticipating that this new kind of brain line AGI is going to be referring to a new kind of reward function. And you don't think it's going to look like predicting the next word. You think it's going to look like legible Python code. So I do think that part of the human brain is doing predictive learning. So you reach out to the door handle and you expect it to, you know, turn easily, but it, or you expect it to be quiet, but it makes a noise and you're surprised by that. You wind up with this complicated model of the world that's able to make really good predictions about what will happen in the future. And I do think that works by predictive learning in a way that's, you know, structurally analogous to a next token prediction. I don't think it's a transformer architecture. 
but it is still a learning algorithm that's trained on predictive learning. We can think about like what, what's special about the reward function from a capabilities perspective, and then we can think about what's special about the human reward function from an alignment perspective. From a capabilities perspective, I really just don't think it's that hard to make a reward function that would lead to powerful capabilities. I think alignment is much harder, but if you just want a reward function that leads to powerful capabilities in the context of brain-like AGI, what you need curiosity you need you need a few other odds and ends but mostly the reward function is important for alignment in my from my perspective and the learning algorithm and the update rules are what's important for capabilities that makes sense i think one distinction you are making is we're not expecting the reward function to be an inscrutable mess we're expecting it to be an actual python module that a human can curate so if and when people make a brain like AGI, then they can put whatever they want as the reward function. So I think that almost anything that they choose to put in would be terribly dangerous. And the question is like, what, what could they put in the reward function that would actually lead to good outcomes, like an AI that doesn't want to kill its programmers and its users and everybody else. The direction that I'm most optimistic or at least least pessimistic about would be a reward function that looks like more or less legible Python code, as opposed to something more like RLHF, where it's trained on thousands of examples of good and bad behavior. I think that the, the, the latter is doomed, and we, we can talk about exactly why I think that. The inscrutable matrices are doomed? Yeah, unpack that a little bit. So when people talk about inscrutable matrices, they're often talking about the learning algorithm. And I do expect that a brain like AGI will still learn a world model that is inscrutable. Just because what what else are you going to do? It's a complicated world. Tires are usually mm -hmm. black and, you know, garbage trucks are often blue. There's just so many things about the world and you're not going to be putting those in the source code. Instead, they need to be in some kind of learned model. And whether they're, you know, entries of a matrix or whatever else, they're probably going to be inscrutable. They're going to be these unlabeled things by default. So there's really no getting around inscrutable matrices or at least inscrutable learned models in in my from my perspective i don't i don't know why people talk as if there's a, another option mm -hmm. but separately the reward function might or might not involve learning algorithm components so the rlhf reward function that's used in large language models is a learned function so people thumbs up and thumbs down lots of different you know, LLM behaviors, and that's used to train this reward model. So you could do that with brain like AGI too. I think it would not lead to a good outcomes. I think it would lead to psychopathic AI that tries to kill everybody. Mm -hmm.